Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Carl Cantalupi. I'm a retired area horticulture agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service, and uh, I would like to share with you today the results of um, an asparagus variety trial that I planted in 2019, and um, I uh, harvested, took the first harvest in 2020. Next. A little bit about the uh, uh, di different kinds of asparagus. As most of you probably know, the industry has gone to using uh, male hybrid asparagus varieties versus the old open pollinated types. Uh, the, uh, the male hybrids uh, produce more asparagus spears than the female plants do because the female plants produce seed when the plant is in the fern growth stage. And um, while that goes on, the, um, the plant has to expend energy to produce those seeds. So the spear yield is less. So over the past 30 years, we've gone to male hybrid asparagus and um, uh, most of the New Jersey male hybrids will be discontinued soon with the exception of, Wal of Walker Deluxe. These are the, this is a New Jersey male hybrid variety. We have newer ones that have been released jointly by Rutgers University and Ville Moren Seed Company. These include Porthos, Green Ox, and Sequoia. Uh, next slide. Um, other male hybrid varieties have been released from the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada. These include Guelph Millennium, Guelph Equinox, and Guelph Eclipse. These varieties produce a longer spear with tight spear tips under warm temperatures. And, the, and if the spear tip is tight, the spear will be tender. Once that spear starts to open up, or as we call fern out, uh, the, the spear gets tough. Uh, these uh, um, new varieties from the University of Guelph also tolerate cold winter temperatures very well. Next slide. Uh, other uh, asparagus varieties include the California hybrids. Uh, the California hybrids are not male hybrids. They are dioecious, meaning that they contain male and female plants, which produce seeds from the female plants that fall to the ground and germinate into weed seedlings. So they need to be controlled with herbicides. Um, these uh, California hybrids are high yielding but they were bred for the hot, dry climates of the West and the Midwest, and they do best in those areas of the United States. Their attribu attributes are being able to produce a tall spear that tolerate high temperatures, but they, don't, they do not overwinter well and may gradually die in cold climates. Some of these uh, California hybrids include Atlas, Grandy, and Purple Passion. Purple Passion has purple, large diameter spears, and contain a higher sugar content than green asparagus. When cooking, the purple pigment is destroyed and reverts back to the green color. Next slide. Here is uh, uh, some asparagus spears that I harvested this past spring, uh, the first year in my variety trial, which includes Walker Deluxe, uh, produces a spear, as you see here, between six to seven inches tall and has very large spear diameters. Next slide. Guelph Millennium from the University of Guelph uh, produces spears uh, between seven to eight inches. And, and this, is, this occurs when we get hot temperatures. So we get a taller spear uh, that weighs more and uh, remains tender. Next slide. Guelph Eclipse is another uh, University of Guelph release. Um, uh, still the same, uh, about six to seven inches tall, and they have very large spear diameters. Next slide. Here are some crown sources uh, of these new asparagus varieties. First, we have Walker plants, and you can see um, they, they carry Walker Deluxe, Jersey Knight, Atlas, Grandy, and Purple Passion. Norse Farms carry Guelph Millennium, Jersey Supreme, Jersey Night and Purple Passion. Next slide. Uh, Daisy Farms carries Porthos, Green Ox, Sequoia, Guelph Millennium, Guelph 
Eclipse and some of the older New Jersey hybrids. Uh, these, um, um, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, if you if you liked if you would like to get the the names and address of these uh, uh, asparagus crown sources, you can you can email me. I'll give you my email address later so that you don't have to worry about you know writing it down. All these sources contain one year old asparagus crowns, so uh, which is really the best way to start a um, a planting of asparagus by using one year old crowns. Next slide. And this is the data that um, I collected from my uh, asparagus uh, variety trial uh, this year. Um, just to go down to the second sentence, um, uh, I can read it. A one-year-old crowns were planted on April 19th, 2019. Eight harvests were taken throughout a three-week period in 2020. The first harvest occurred on April 16th. Harvest did not resume until May the 1st due to frosts. The last harvest occurred on May 8th when the majority of spear diameters started to become less than 3 8 inches in diameter. So if we look at the table, you, uh, on the left you see the three varieties in the trial, Walker Deluxe, Guelph Millennium, and Guelph Eclipse. Um, the first uh, column to the right shows the, the pounds per acre obtained that were greater than 3 8 inches in diameter. So you can see Guelph Eclipse produced the largest uh, diameter spears, followed by Walker Deluxe and then Guelph Millennium. The next uh, column shows uh, the, 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 uh, the weight of spears in pounds per acre that were less than 3 8 inches in diameter. This shows Guelph Millennium and Guelph Eclipse produced uh, 119 pounds, with Walker Deluxe producing 344 pounds of uh, spears that are less than 3 8 inches in diameter. The numbers of spears per plant produced, Walker Deluxe was the, the, in first place with 3.7 spears per plant, followed by Guelph Eclipse at 2.3 spears per plant, and then Guelph Millennium at 1.4. And then the last column shows the total yield per acre in pounds. Uh, the first place was Walker Deluxe with 594 pounds, Second place, Guelph Eclipse with 499 pounds. And uh, third place, Guelph Millennium with 232 pounds. Next slide. If you would like my email address, uh, you can see it's uh, the, the bottom line on the slide. It says carl1954 at ptd.net. Again, that's carl1954 at ptd.net. You can email me and ask me for the list of uh, asparagus crown sources. I'll email those to you. And also, if you'd like to obtain a copy of my uh, asparagus bulletin, uh, it is for sale. It's a comprehensive 68-page regional bulletin that covers the planting, growing, harvesting, and marketing of asparagus, including a budget with cost and expected income per acre for the serious commercial asparagus grower. This new revision includes 25 color photos of insects, diseases, and planting techniques, along with new Pennsylvania variety trial results. So I've uh, written this book. I have over 30 years of applied research experience in the Northeast, Southeast, and Midwest, enabling asparagus growers to become successful. So to order your copy, send a check or money order for $25 to myself, Carl Cantalupi, at 1222 Grangers Road, Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania, 17870. And again, you can email me and um, I will tell you this information uh, when I reply back uh, with, with my email to you. So uh, that's the end of my uh, presentation. Um, if, there, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer.